Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Nitrogen Industries, Nitric Acid. We will have a recapitulation of uh, previous class before going into the details of today's class. In the previous lecture, we started about uh, fertilizer industries where we started about nitrogen industries and then discussed about ammonia production. However, before going into the details of ammonia production, what we have done? We have done why are we studying about the fertilizer industries or manufacturing of fertilizers? What are the uh, contributions that chemical engineering is uh, giving to the agricultural industry so that uh, agricultural industry can become productive? Those kind of things we have seen. So, we started listing a few major contributions of chemical engineering to agriculture industry where we have seen that fertilizers, pesticides and then several types of unit operations such as uh, drying, etc. are uh, very essential uh, contribution that chemical engineering has given to the agricultural industry. Thus, uh, it is very much essential for us chemical engineering uh, students to understand about the manufacturing process of different types of fertilizers and pesticides. Right? So, that is the reason we started with the fertilizers. Then we have seen uh, why the fertilizers are important, why not can we expect this uh, uh, you know uh, major components of uh, uh, fertilizers like uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium naturally, what are the reasons etc. those things we have seen. Then we have seen sources of uh, fertilizers. Then we started discussing about the nitrogen industries or nitrogenous fertilizers production that is what we started with. We started with ammonia, we started with its raw materials, associated reactions, process and flow chart, major engineering problems and end uses of the ammonia. Those details we have seen in the previous lecture. In the today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the nitric acid. So, before going to the production and then engineering problems of nitric acid uh, production plants, etc., what we do? We start with its pertinent properties. If you see its properties, molecular weight is 63.03, melting point is minus 42 degree centigrade, then boiling point with the decomposition is 86 degree centigrade because it decomposes as as the temperature reaches 86 degrees centigrade rather completely boiling. Then specific gravity 1.502 at 18 degrees centigrade. Coming to the solubility, it is completely miscible with water and forms a constant boiling mixture at 110 degrees centigrade and 760 mm which contains 68 weight percent of nitric acid. Then coming to the grades, concentrated technical grade or concentrated nitric acid as technical grade as per the United States Pharmacopoeia. If it is 95 percent nitric acid is there, then it is uh, considered as concentrated as well as the technical grade for uh, a pharmaceutical applications. Then commercial grade, if it is having 52 to 68 percent of nitric acid, then it is uh, considered as commercial grade uh, nitric acid. Fuming nitric acid, if it is having more than 86 percent uh, HNO3. Red fuming nitric acid, if it is having 95 percent or more HNO3 with additional 10 to 15 percent excess dissolved oxides of nitrogen such as dinitrogen tetroxide, etc. Then nitrating or mixed acid, which is nothing but a mixture of uh, nitric acid and sulfuric acid, it uh, fraction of a 90, uh, fraction of nitric acid and then H2SO4 varies in general. It may be rich in HNO3 as much as 90 percent HNO3 and then, and then it may be having uh, you know as low as 15 percent H2SO4. Then it may also have 50 percent HNO3 and then 48 percent H2SO4, wide ranges are uh, possible depending on the applications. Consumption pattern, primarily ammonium nitrate uh, production purpose, this nitric acid is used. Okay? That ammonium nitrate primarily be used for fertilizers as well as for explosives. Okay? It is also used for a production of several chemicals such as adipic acid which is used as a fiber and plastic uh, precursor in polymer industries. Then dinitrotolvin for uh, preparation of uh, toluene diisocyanate uh, mixtures. Then nitrobenzene preparations, something like for aniline preparation. 
then sodium, potassium and calcium nitrate productions, other nitro compounds for explosive purpose as well and then so many other miscellaneous purposes are also this nitric acid is used. Now methods of production, primarily four methods of production are there. The first one is ammonia oxidation process, whatever the nitric acid that is available in the market, 90 percent of it is coming from this process, it is very essential process. So, we are going to discuss production of nitric acid from this process. Okay. It is having four steps, four reaction steps. First step is ammonia oxidation to nitric oxide, then oxidation of nitric oxide to nitrogen dioxide, then absorption of nitrogen dioxide in water to get uh, HNO3 that is nitric acid and then finally concentration of HNO3. You may get 57 to 60 percent of HNO3 something like that in this process that can be further concentrated up to 95 percent HNO3. So, these four steps are primary steps, important steps in this uh, nitric acid production by ammonia oxidation process. Differences in various plants are actually so many plants, uh, modern plants are in fact almost all plants are uh, uh, based on ammonia oxidation uh, process as we said that 90 percent of HNO3 is coming from this process only. So, uh, from one plant to the other plant there may be some uh, variation, some changes in the conditions or designs etc. So, some of the important variations are pressure levels in oxidation and absorption. That is one important difference you may find out from one plant to the other plant. Then power recovery how the power is being recovered. Here in this process there is a source of uh, steam, how it is being collected as a process steam or uh, turbine steam or for the production of you know other purposes etc. Those things you know that comes all under power recovery, how the plant is doing the power recovery and then methods of dehydrating 60 percent acid formed by absorption. By for absorption you can get 57 to 60 percent of acid only. If you how, how are you increasing its concentration up to 95 percent it is possible. So, how are you doing it? So, what are these uh, dehydrating methodologies uh, uh, followed by different plants? You know, these may be a few variations that may be found um, between different plants producing nitric acid. Second process is the oldest process which was used prior to 1920 where uh, its production is by the re reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium nitrate, but it is no more used nowadays. Third process is nitrogen fixation from air which, the, which is also which is also known as Wisconsin process. Here NO and then nitrogen dioxide produced in a gas fired pebble bed reactor using air at high temperature as much as like 2200 degree centigrade followed by quick quenching. But however, effluents of this method contain only 2 percent of NO2 which is too dilute to recover economically. Whereas the fourth method is the nitrogen fixation by nuclear fission fragments. In a nuclear reactor, air is exposed to radiation to form NO, however, this method is very expensive. So, the best option is to produce nitric acid by ammonia oxidation process. Okay. Before going into the details of uh, this process, we have to list out what are these reactions. We have just seen that four important reactions are there in this process. So, we have to see all these reactions and then we go uh, to the flowchart followed by process description and then major engineering problems of this uh, process followed by end uses. Chemical reactions, major reactions uh, of ammonia oxidation, when ammonia is oxidized it will give NO and then water, 2 moles of NO further oxidized to give 2 moles of nitrogen dioxide which can be absorbed in an uh, absorption tower to get uh, HNO3. Side reactions, ammonia oxidation, here ammonia can also be oxidized to give nitrogen and water that depends on the how many moles required how, uh, those things are there. So, insufficient oxygen is there, so then it is possible that it is uh, giving nitrogen and then water. 
then ammonia may be decomposed to its uh, basic uh, elements nitrogen and hydrogen okay then ammonia oxidation may also take place to give NO and then water whereas the ammonia may be reacting with the NO to give nitrogen and then water so now these reactions first reactions a and b we are calling major reactions because here no2 is forming that no2 may be absorbed in water to get uh, hno3 right so that is what the process that actually hno3 production is the purpose of this process right so these are major reaction and important reaction also but during the process where you have the anhydrous uh, uh, ammonia and then compressed air actually you take as a raw material or feed material to react and then give HNO3. So, in between you know so many steps are there and then from this reaction so many gases uh, are forming because of the either of the uh, major reactions or side reactions because their conditions of formation may be closely related right. Actually when uh, anhydrous ammonia reacts with the compressed air you get only 10 to 12 percent of NO only this further NO has to be oxidized to get NO2 that is taking place in absorption uh, in, in absorption tower right in absorption tower this is taking place ok. So, where it increases its yield increases further so that is a different thing but when, when you see these reactions are occurring between ammonia and compressed air you are getting gases mixture where only 10 to 12 percent of NO is there remaining may be so many other thing other things like you know nitrogen, hydrogen and then water vapors etc all those things may be there. So, all these reactions are detrimental to the process these have to be as minimum as possible you cannot avoid completely ok but as minimum as possible such a way that you have to do the design and then such a way you have to maintain the operating conditions ok. There are few more reactions that is nitric oxide oxidation and absorption here 2 NO reacting with oxygen O2 to give 2 NO2 that is nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide 3 moles of uh, nitrogen dioxide reacts with 1 mole of water that is in absorption then you get 2 moles of HNO3 nitric acid and then 1 mole of NO ok. However, this nitrogen dioxide may also be forming dinitrogen tetraoxide which is not uh, required or the absorption between uh, nitrogen dioxide and water may take place such a way that you have 2 moles of nitrogen dioxide only then you get uh, 1 mole nitric acid and then 1 mole nitrous acid. So, here in this reaction H you are getting 2 moles of uh, nitric acid whereas here you are getting only 1 mole whereas the additional 1 mole you are getting nitrous acid. Here in this uh, reaction H you are getting 2 moles of nitric acid whereas in reaction J you are getting only 1 mole of nitric acid that only change is what here you are get you are using 3 moles of a nitrogen dioxide whereas here in this reaction you are getting only 2 moles of a nitrogen dioxide that means if insufficient uh, nitrogen dioxide is formed in the NO oxidation process that is occurring in absorption tower then you get insufficient HNO3 or uh, acid strength may not be sufficient enough in addition to that you may also get nitrous acid this nitrous acid may be decomposed to form NO and then NO2 that is nitrogen dioxide and then water vapor as well right. So, now uh, these reactions all these reactions uh, occurring in this uh, NO oxidation and absorption process as well as the side reaction and then a main reaction that we have seen in the previous slide all of them are reversible. So, whenever you have the reversible reaction the thermodynamics and then kinetics of uh, corresponding equations become very complicated and then they uh, become important factor in the design as well as the operation of the process or the plant ok. Next if you see the raw materials obviously here raw materials ammonia from synthetic ammonia process that we have seen in the previous lecture and then clean and filtered air ok. 
catalyst, makeup catalyst is required which is a platinum rhodium alloy catalyst. Quantitative requirements if you see to produce 1 ton of 100 percent nitric acid you need anhydrous ammonia 0 0.287 to 0 0.290 tons, air 3000 normal cubic meters, platinum with 2 to 10 percent rhodium promoted only 0.1 grams, process water 120 tons. In this reaction so much of heat is evolved so then cooling is required uh, you know then you need, you need so much of process water about to get 1 ton of uh, uh, nitric acid you need 120 tons of process water because absorption is also involved here. Not only absorption, cooling of the system is also required in order to recover the energy etc. Steam credit 1 ton at 200 psig, power 10 to 30 kilowatt hours and in plant capacities between 50 to 250 tons in individual units with 3 to 5 units per plant. In a plant you may be having 3 to 5 units producing nitric acid. Okay? Now we see flow chart for the nitric acid production from ammonia oxidation process. Okay? Here what we have? We have anhydrous ammonia and then we have compressed air. These are mixed together at what volume ratios? They mixed at 10 volume percent of ammonia and then 90 volume percent air at 3.5 atmospheres for the mixing. This is the pressure requirement that is taken to a shell and tube kind of reactor which is having three section, converter section where the catalytic uh, reactions are taking place, superheater and then heat recovery boiler section. This um, mixture of uh, anhydrous ammonia and then uh, compressed air come to the reactor at the top where you have converter section which is having maybe 10 to 30. platinum rhodium sheets like you know maybe they may be seen as a uh, 60 to 80 mesh sieves kind of things made up of this material. So, they are arranged uh, as a kind of stake here and then these gases pass through these catalytic uh, sheets, platinum rhodium sheets. right? So, then the reaction takes place and then when this reaction takes place. 800 degrees centigrade, the gases whatever are coming out they may be at very high temperature like as much as 800 degrees centigrade. So, they are passed to, through superheater and then heat recovery boiler to collect some steam. This collected steam is either used as a process steam or it is taken to the turbine as a turbine steam. right? So, the gases uh, here after this whatever uh, gases are having they are having only 10 to 12 percent of NO only and then remaining are either NO2 or uh, you know uh, N2O4 or N2O2 or N2O etc. This kind of so many gases may also be present and then when this reaction uh, occurs and then these gases are flowing down they, it is possible these gases may also be carrying some amount of catalyst because uh, you know this catalyst are formed as a kind of mesh as a kind of sheaves. Okay? So, this catalyst recovery is done then uh, this passed through a tail gas heater and then steam economizer and then it is uh, sent to a quenching system right? where the cooling of uh, these gases takes place using the spray water. You know suddenly high temperature gases are cooled to low temperature by spraying with cold temp uh, cold water right here. So, whatever little amount of uh, NO2 is there that would be absorbed by H2O and then dilute acid 9 to 10 percent HNO3 acid would be formed that is collected at the bottom. But majority of that is not uh, absorbed because only a little amount of uh, NO2 is there and then 10 to 12 percent of NO is only there. So, these gases after cooling what, what is done? Uh, they are mixed with air and then sent to oxidation and then absorption tower right? which is at 40 to 50 degree centigrade. Here in this section only this NO oxidation to NO2 is taking place 
and then NO2 absorption in water to HNO3 is also taking place and then we have seen other possible reactions also in this one. And then this 40 to 50 degree centigrade is a best suitable temperature because equilibrium constants are not uh, very high in this particular uh, reaction where this oxidation of nitrous oxide is taking place to produce nitrogen dioxide, right. So now here water cooling is provided from the uh, top which is added externally so that whatever the NO2 is formed that would be absorbed and then you get 57 to 60 percent of HNO3 solution for use as it is if that acid strength is sufficient or if you need higher concentration acid then you have to do concentration of uh, this uh, HNO3 to get 95 percent HNO3. Whereas tail gases which are not being absorbed they will be sent back uh, to the uh, expander by passing through a tail gas heater and then this process continues like this. Okay. So now here so many uh, factors, engineering uh, factors would be there. So we are going to see one by one after having seen, after seeing the steps of the process. Okay. So in this process further it is important to understand what is the uh, tower made up of uh, especially this oxidation and absorption tower. There are uh, different possibilities are there. So this absorption tower or oxidation and absorption tower is in general made up of series of packed or sieved trays which are arranged in vertical manner like this or you have a series of horizontal cascade absorber which may be uh, arranged like in a horizontal manner like this in a cascade manner like this, okay. Now process description, anhydrous ammonia and compressed air are mixed and then fed to shell and tube type converter. In this reactor preheater and then steam heat recovery boiler superheater are within the same reactor shell. 10 to 30 sheets of platinum rhodium alloy are packed in the converter section. This alloy is in the form of 60 to 80 mesh wire packed in layers inside the tube. To this converter gas passes down to the catalyst zone which is at 800 degree centigrade. The gas velocity is designed such a way that contact time is very less order of 10 power of minus 4 seconds in the catalyst zone. Product gases exiting from the reactor contains only 10 to 12 percent of NO. These gases are sent through following unit operations sequentially like heat recovery units, quench unit for rapid cooling to remove large fraction of product heat, oxidizer absorber system. Then by adding air to the NO, it is oxidized to NO2 at 40 to 50 degree centigrade low temperature of absorption system. These conditions are more favorable for oxidation of NO to form NO2. Absorption system may be a series of packed or sieved ray vertical towers or a series of horizontal cascade absorbers. From this water absorption system a product solution containing 57 to 60 percent HNO3 obtained which can be sold as it is or concentrated as per the requirement up to 95 percent HNO3. So now we see how to increase the concentration of nitric acid from 60 percent to 90-95 percent HNO3 etc. as per the requirement. There are two approaches are there. First approach is concentration by H2SO4. In this process what happens? Silicon, iron or stoneware towers are used where rectification of HNO3 by 93 percent H2SO4 produces concentrated nitric acid whereas sulfuric acid concentration decreased to 70 percent. This 70 percent H2SO4 may be re-evaporated to 93 percent or used elsewhere in the plant as it is. Other method is concentration by magnesium nitrate uh, 
solution. Here magnesium nitrate solution and then dilute acid from the absorption tower are fed to dehydrating tray tower. In this process magnesium nitrate solution acts as extractive distillation agent that removes water at 100 degree centigrade or higher and allows rectification without azeotrope formation. Right? Finally, whatever dilute magnesium nitrate solution is there that can be reconcentrated by evaporation for reuse purpose. Out of these two methods, magnesium nitrate method is you know advantages. One is the clearly you can see the H2SO4 is more expensive than the magnesium nitrate. Okay? So, uh, not only that one, the cost wise operating cost wise operating costs are approximately about half of those encountered with H2SO4 concentration process. In addition, capital requirements are only 70 percent as great and acid quality yield are also improved by this magnesium nitrate process. Okay? Now we see major engineering problems, primarily two issues are there. One is the thermodynamics and kinetics which will always be there if you have uh, many reversible reactions and then process design modifications. First start with thermodynamics and kinetic considerations. In this process reactions are reversible and exothermic in the forward direction all reactions are reversible. All reactions are reversible and then all reactions are exothermic in the forward direction. One step high temperature converter design may be used for ammonia conversion as ammonia oxidizes to give NO which is having extremely favorable equilibrium constant. In addition a slight advantage of equilibrium is also possible on operating at low pressures like 1 atmosphere. This advantage is more than offset by increased capacity in a given reactor volume with subsequent catalyst and reactor savings when operating at high pressures. Uh, 3 to 8 atmosphere. In this case operating at uh, 3 to 8 atmosphere itself is a high pressure. Then further NO oxidation do not have as large as equilibrium constant. So, then this occurs at low temperatures, low temperature of 40 to 50 degree centigrade itself is sufficient. Thus, it predominates in cooling and absorption system of process operating at 40 to 50 degree centigrade. So, in this process more than the catalytic converter this absorption tower whatever is there you know oxidation and absorption tower that is very important. Because here the conditions you need only low temperature conditions 40 to 50 degree centigrade and then Input gas that is coming here is only having 10 to 12 percent NO whereas you are getting from this one acid having up to 60 percent HNO3. Such important is this process. But however, the converter, the shell and tube uh, reactor or converter system whatever is there that is unavoidable because after that step only it is uh, happening. There in that process having multi-stage reaction etc. is not going to be useful because NO oxidation is not taking place much in that section. NO oxidation is favorable at low temperature. So, do the uh, oxidation of ammonia at high temperature to get NO in the converter, in the catalytic converter and then whatever the gases are there that after quenching you take it to the oxidation absorption tower which is operating at low temperature of 40 to 50 degree centigrade. So, that you get majority of uh, NO is being converted to the NO2 and then majority of NO2 is being absorbed in water to get HNO3. All of NO which is liberated on absorption of NO2 must also be reoxidized in the absorption tower. Okay? So, that uh, recycling can also be done, recirculation of this NO gas, unreacted uh, NO gas may also be done again by sending it to the absorption or oxidation absorption tower itself. Summary of reaction kinetics of ammonia oxidation stage if you see ammonia oxidation to give NO is favored by increasing temperature until an optimum is reached which increases with high or higher gas velocities. That means this reaction will happen at high temperatures, 
how much high? Approximately at 800 degree centigrade is found to be optimum one. See all these things when you do, if you take the kinetics and thermodynamics of individual reactions and do so much of thermodynamics and then chemical reaction analysis, kinetic analysis, then you can understand these things. But you know, uh, this course is not dedicated on the thermodynamics or kinetics. We are taking a summary of uh, you know those studies, right? Studies have found that ammonia oxidation to give NO is possible when the temperature is high as much as 800 degree centigrade. If you operate at low temperature like 500 or 400 degree centigrade, NO may not form or uh, rather forming NO it may be decomposing to N2 and H2 and then forming other kind of uh, components as well, N2 and water something like that as we have seen in the side reactions. So, if the main reaction to occur the temperature has to be as much high as possible like up to 800 degree centigrade in the catalytic reactor zone. Advantage of this is that back diffusion of NO into the higher ammonia concentration region is prevented. In such kind of catalytic reactors, this catalytic zone whatever we have seen in the shell and tube section, the top section, what we are having? We are having 10 to 30 sheets of a platinum uh, rhodium alloy which are like you know they are in the wire forms. Within that small region 10 to 30 sheets are there. So, when the so many sheets are there, so whatever uh, gases, input gases of anhydrous ammonia and then air are there. So, moment they come here there some NO may be forming, right. So, when this NO is formed and then there is no sufficient space to move it quickly to the next level, what will happen? it may back diffuse to ammonia, ammonia, uh, higher ammonia concentration region which are usually at the top because from the top anhydrous ammonia along with the compressed air are coming, okay. So, what is the advantage? If you do a reaction at high temperature, quickly it uh, oxidized, ammonia oxidized to NO. So, ammonia concentration decreases gradually and more NO is forming. So, uh, back diffusion of NO into the ammonia is not possible or can be prevented. Under such case, reaction between ammonia and then nitric oxide may also take place to give nitrogen and water vapors, which is quite possible, but it should be avoided, okay, because we do not want uh, N2 or H2O, but we want NO. From NO, we can get NO2 and then from there we can get HNO3. At given set of conditions, allowing platinum with rhodium improves yield and then diffusional transport of ammonia molecules to the catalyst surface, at what rate ammonia is diffusing onto the catalyst surface that is formed as a uh, 60 to 80 uh, mesh wire, mesh size wire. So, then at what rate diffusion of this ammonia is taking place onto the catalyst surface? And then moment it comes and then uh, diff diffuses, so let us say uh, we have the catalyst particle like this bigger one we have taken, okay. For example, this, this is here and then we are just taking it here. So from the bulk of ammonia that is input coming, so when it comes and then uh, diffuse by diffusion it reaches here, it reach, moment it reaches the catalyst surface immediately it is forming NO, right because it is a high temperature reaction, the catalytic surface is at a high temperature at approximately 800 degree centigrade. This NO is forming, right. So, this at what rate NH3 is diffusing to the surface of catalyst and then at what rate NO is forming on the catalyst surface when this oxidation of ammonia is taking place on the catalyst surface, these two rates are very nearly corresponded to each other and then that makes easy uh, process calculations like you know subsequent process or you know formation you know uh, the rate if the NH3 coming at one rate and then NO is going out at a slower rate. So, then NO may be accumulated on the catalyst surface which is not good, right. If both of them are at this almost uh, similar rate, so then what, whatever rate ammonia is reaching the uh, catalyst surface at the same rate NO may be uh, forming and then leaving out to the bulk of uh, NO region. So, then it is uh, going to be another advantage. Then a rate of ammonia oxidation reaction is directly proportional to the system pressure. So, higher pressure conditions may be uh, better for the oxidation of ammonia. How much pressure is higher pressure that is again the question here. 
you cannot have like 1000, it depends on the process to process, right? This reaction actually can be taken place at a 1 atmospheric pressure as well and then intermediate 3 to 4 atmospheric pressure also. But if you are going uh, pressure as like 6 to 8 atmosphere or something like that, so that pressure in this case is considered as a high pressure. However, rate of ammonia oxidation reaction is directly proportional to the system pressure that we understand from the reversible reaction between ammonia and then air oxidizing to give NO. Design criteria based on absorption of nitrogen oxides by chemical reaction with water for absorber operation efficiency, lower temperature is preferable because equilibrium constants of this NO2 absorption into water or NO oxidizing into NO2, both of them are actually reversible. So then these rates, you know, not, not very high, equilibrium constants are not very high. So then if the equilibrium constants are not very high, so you do not need to uh, uh, unnecessarily use the high temperature, high pressure conditions because that is not going to improve any way for this reaction, the reaction kinetics are like that. So then you can operate at low temperature. Physical absorption rates favored by increasing pressure that shifts the chemical equilibrium to produce higher acid strength. So whatever this reaction let us say is there forming HNO3, if you are doing physical absorption. In order to accelerate the absorption process, if you increase the pressure, you know it is good. So when you increase the pressure, more HNO3 is forming and then as you keep on moving it, the equilibrium shifts, the equilibrium shifts to produce higher acid strength that is possible, higher amount of, uh, if you keep on forming HNO3 and then recovering from the bottom, more HNO3 is forming and then its acid strength may be increasing, that is the possibility and then that you can have by physical absorption and then physical absorption rates may be increased by increasing the pressure. Then in the gas phase, the rate of absorption is dependent on concentration of NO2. Right? If more uh, NO2 is present in the gaseous mixture, so then higher absorption of NO2 may take place to give higher acid concentrations. Okay? If the concentration of NO2 is more than 5 percent, then controlling reaction is the solution of dinitrogen tetroxide accompanied by hydrolysis to give HNO3 and then HNO2. This reaction, if the acid strength is more, then uh, you know controlling reaction, this forming accompanied by the hydrolysis to this uh, nitric acid and then nitrous acid are going to be the controlling reactions. Now we see process design modifications. These are also based on the experience of different plants. We are not going into the details because our understanding, our scope of the course is understanding the process, how it is occurring uh, in a plant. Okay? Large number of plants use either of the following operating pressure options such as intermediate that is 3 to 4 atmosphere or higher pressure 8 atmosphere rather than completely atmospheric pressure conditions. Some systems have a mixed uh, kind of things that you know at atmospheric pressure oxidation can take place and at uh, high pressure absorption can take place. We have seen from the kinetics and then thermodynamics consideration oxidation is favorable at uh, 40 to 50 degrees centigrade only or we have seen NO oxidation to NO2 is not having very high equilibrium constant. So, you know increasing temperature pressure is not going to help in any way. So then you can do this reaction at uh, one atmosphere and then whatever this NO2 is forming, it has to be absorbed in water to give HNO3 of course which is also a reversible reaction. So this uh, we have seen absorption is usually uh, can be enhanced, uh, absorption can easily be enhanced by increasing the pressure, right? So you can do the absorption at higher pressure whereas oxidation at the lower pressure, that is also possible. So people do a combination of both. That means whatever the oxidation and absorption tower is there, the designing is such a way that wherever the, whichever the region oxidation is taking place the pressure is maintained low like atmospheric pressure and then wherever the region where the absorption of NO2 in water is taking place, the pressure is maintained that is high pressure something like 8 atmosphere is maintained. Because of high cost of high pressure vessels, 
high pressure operations are limited because actually uh, let us say uh, even in the laboratory scales in general if you have a one uh, reactor of uh, 100 ml if it is uh, reaction if you wanted to do the reaction at one atmospheric pressure then uh, material of construction is uh, not you know ss316 kind of materials may be used and then that may not be very expensive but uh, for the same volume reactor if you wanted to do a reaction at high pressures like you know 100 bars or 200 bars you you need to go for a different material of construction like inconel etc which may be expensive right so obviously if you go for high pressure reactors or high pressure systems then you know cost of material co material of construction whatever is there that cost increases and then overall that unit construction cost also increases whether it is unit operation or unit process so because of high cost of high pressure vessels high pressure operations are obviously limited if you have option to do uh, a process or operation at low pressures it is better to go for the low pressures because of such cost issues if you do not have any option the reaction has to go or the process has to go only at the high pressure so then uh, you don't have any option for that you have to go for uh, expensive high pressure vessels but if you have option then you can go for the low pressure of uh, you know vessels uh, if the pressure is not a big uh, reason for the success of any operations or uh, press, uh, operation or uh, process advantages of elevated pressures high reaction rates and then lower volumes in both oxidation and absorption equipment and then higher acid strength and lower investment cost disadvantages of uh, higher pressure uh, processes lower oxidation yields and then higher catalyst losses unless good filtering processes are used and then higher power requirements if power recovery units are not specified now we see economics of uh, nitric acid that is uh, end use of uh, nitric acid where we can use it majorly it is used in fertilizer industry as an acidulant for phosphate rock to produce nitrophosphate for mixed fertilizers mixed fertilizers we are going to discuss you know uh, later on uh, in the subsequent course after a couple of weeks in production of uh, ammonium nitrate which is a synthetic uh, nitrogen fertilizer containing 35 percent n due to population growth and increased standard of living this hno3 consumption in fertilizer industry is expected to increase anyway in the form of ammonium nitrate oil mixtures which is a cheap open pit explosive for quarrying mining and construction purpose for mining purpose some construction purpose you may often require to use some explosives so this ammonium nitrate and oil mixtures are you know uh, economical uh, explosive sources its use in the form of explosives is almost stable with very little growth because almost like a you know saturation has come rocket propellant compositions provides a small but increasing market for uh, uh, such products as fuming red nitric acid that is concentrated hno3 having more than 86 percent hno3 with n2o4 solubilized and n2o4 and non-propellant such as tetra nitromethane these are also used as rocket propellant and then in order to manufacture these things also you need to have this nitric acid now the references for today's lecture are provided here but the entire uh, lecture is prepared from this reference book whereas additional details you may find from these books as well thank you mm -hmm.